this uh, this meeting room and see a lot of students and parents and supportive people present. I, I really enjoy my board, but when we have meetings, it, it sure, I don't know if we call it board or, or whatever, but it, it's, it's hard to look at these folks all the time when I know that we could have students in the audience. So we have invited students that uh, have accomplished some things and certainly deserving of recognition. I made a comment this morning to our staff, to, to my staff here at the office, that we get caught up sometimes in the, the everyday activities of school, like for instance, we worry about and we, we work on finances, we worry about and, and work on whether our schedules is, is correct and, and, and adequate to take care of the needs of our students, we worry about testing, we prepare for testing, we're concerned about getting results of the tests and so forth and so on, and we spend so much time in the process that we sometimes lose sight of the, what the purpose of school really is, and that is to benefit and to, uh, to, to recognize or help students prepare for, for life and the challenges of life. And uh, sometimes we don't recognize our, our young people, young men and women, for what they have done and what they're doing. So, uh, students, you're here. Parents, you've been invited. <coughs> and all the other school folks that are here, employees, you're here because we want to spend just a small, small portion of time this afternoon saying thank you for the hard work that you put forth and doing what really school is all about, and that is helping young folks be what they need to be to be successful in life. So thank you for being here. We have young people who've excelled at local, uh, district, regional, state level, and qu some qualified to go to nationals in competition, uh, that's outstanding. And sometimes you just don't receive the recognition, students, that you need to receive. Yeah, mama and daddy and grandma and grandpa, they're hugging and saying, I'm so proud of you. But you kind of expect that from mom and dad and grandparents. But we want you to know as a board, and I want you to know as a superintendent, we want you to know when parish wants you to know how proud we are 
of your accomplishments. And we challenge you to continue to work hard and continue to do well and bring recognition to yourself and in essence uh, uh, make us proud and win parish continually. So I've invited, we've invited representatives from any school that had these outstanding accomplishments on the state level and, and up. And I'm, I think we have principals from all schools rep represented. And I'm going to start with Atlanta, starting with A's, and I'll go down the list. So Atlanta High School's principal, Ms. Bridget Bartlett, is here. Ms. Bartlett, I'd like for you to come kind of up toward the front and recognize the accomplishments of the students from Atlanta High School and teachers or coaches or whomever they may be for what they've done. You can stand down there so they can all see. I feel a little unprepared, I, so I had to bring my phone with me to get my notes because I didn't print them off because I thought Mr. Bartlett was going to do this. So I emailed him everything and I didn't bring a copy for myself, so I'm going to have to use my phone to read off some names, but I appreciate I him. told you three minutes I know, ago. I know, I know. <laughs> I've had plenty of time to prepare, so. Um, and those of you that know me know I don't do this real well all the time, speaking in front of adults. I don't mind children. Um, but I, I would like to thank the board and Mr. Bartlett for this opportunity to brag on my students. I don't feel like I get to do it enough outside Atlanta High School. I do it inside the school and I'm very proud of my school and, and the students that represent Atlanta High School on a daily basis. And I'm going to start with my FBLA if Mr. Mercer and um, Katie and Casey will come forward. Um, I'm going to ask Mr. Mercer if he doesn't mind. I don't want to mess up, so I'm going to ask him to correct me if I if I miss uh, anything. But Katie is our new District 3 Vice President. She was elected as District 3 Vice President, so she will be representing um, FBLA at, at the state of Louisiana at the national competition and all next year as the District 3 Vice President. And Casey was elected. He um, was elected at the um, state meeting as our state parliamentarian. So he will also be going to nationals and um, will be a state officer for FBLA um, as the state parliamentarian. And I'm very proud of both of them. I know that we've had state officers in the past, but I don't know that we've ever had two. So um, I'm, I'm very proud of them and, and their accomplishments. And this year we had um, 21 students compete? We had 17. 17 compete. compete. Okay. And, um, you know, I thought that was great. We, as Ms. Stroud, when she left, we struggled finding a business teacher. And um, Jason stepped in this year and I thought did a great job. And he is already preparing for next year. When he came back from the state convention, he said, we'll, we'll have more than that next year. He said, because I know what to expect. And so I'm very pleased. And although they are the only two that are going to represent us, you know, on the national level, I know we did have... How many? We had 13 of our 17 placed in the top 10. So wow. I thought that was That's very good. Awesome. So right. I'm very proud of, of Mr. Mercer <clears throat> and Katie and Casey and, and our whole FBLA chapter and, and what they've accomplished this year. <clears throat> and these next guys probably don't want me to call them forward, but I am anyway. <laughs> so um, Coach Johnson, if you'll lead the pack and bring your boys with you. Um, they're not all here. Some had to work tonight and others just um, could, one didn't have a ride, you know, several different reasons, but um, I'm thankful to those that, that did come and they represent the entire um, Atlanta High School. And I'm just going to read their names, starting with the seniors. We have Taryn Sapp, one which is here today. Um, Taryn, raise your hand. <laughs> he is a senior. Um, Shamari Johnson is also a senior. Shamari. And uh, Elvis Smith is not here. He is a senior. Um, Taryn Sapp, too, is not here. He will be a, a, he's a junior. DeAndre Sapp is also a junior. He's at work. Tyler Cotton is a junior. Um, Lashard Powell, sophomore. Josh Pennywell, sophomore. Uh, Tony Brown is not here. He's a sophomore. Michael McKinney, a sophomore. Jarrell Moore and Kendrick Smith, Anthony Pine are all sophomores. Um, Willie Henson was a freshman and Rashard Powell is also here. He is um, our right hand as far as a manager. He takes care and makes sure that we're all in line when we're supposed to be and we're thankful for him. But these guys, um, and I don't want to leave out Coach Johnson. He um, was named uh, Coach of the Year for Class C 
So that was a great accomplishment. This is his first year as a head coach. And Coach Johnson, what was our record this year? 33 and 6. 33 and 6. And I'm sure most of you know that we fell a little short in the final game, but not to me. We walked away winners, and I was proud. I am proud of these boys and the way that they represent Atlanta High School. I tell them all the time, no matter where they are, they're always representing Atlanta. Therefore, they're always representing me. And um, they make me proud every day, and I'm thankful for each of them. And we're going to miss the seniors next year, but I expect to be right back next year in the final game. We're going to win it next year. Right, guys? <laughs> All right. Yes, ma'am. I just want to say, uh, and I get in trouble when I when I do things like this, but uh, it makes me feel so good to see young men and and young ladies dressed appropriately, neatly, in attire like that. Uh, uh, you guys and young lady presented yourself this evening. Uh, this, I mean, this this afternoon, this evening. Uh, I know that uh, as a state officer, Katie, you and uh, and, and your counterpart, Casey. Casey, will represent FBLA in the state of Louisiana in a very forceful and great way. I can tell by the way you're dressed and how you present yourself. That means a whole lot. Mm -hmm. Thank you for being that way. And I'll also say that, that Atlanta High School men, the, the basketball team, are the state, even though we fell short of what they call in Baton Rouge or in, in the state, they call the state champions. We are the state public school champions in basketball. <laughs> coach Tyler, I really was hoping your principal would ask you, how does it feel to be a first year coach? Stand up again, coach. How does it feel to be a first year coach and have a record of 33 and 6? And be the... <laughs> That's how Wisconsin coach feels, too. <laughs> We're very proud of all of you, and we have a first-year business teacher, Jason Mercer. Uh, we're very proud of you and the, your accomplishments, and we expect great, great things from Atlanta High School. So thank you all for, for what you've done this year to bring honor and, 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 and presence to Atlanta High School and to Wynn Parish. So thank you very much. And the leadership of the administration is certainly high quality also. Calvin High School. Do we have the principal from Calvin? I am. No. <laughs> no. Patricia, no. come right in and talk about your crew. No. You um, and Miss Jones does send her apologies. She had to take up money at the softball game today. And that's where a few of my um, children are as well. So she does send her apologies and she wanted me um, to tell you this. But on behalf of Calvin High School FBLA, I, I just want to talk to you a minute about um, my kids at the school. And I, I have a wonderful FBLA group just like um, Atlanta, Dotson, and Winfield do. And um, my kids are very, very important to me. Um, this year, Calvin did receive the um, Gold Seal Chapter of Merit Award, and, and there are top ten places, and Calvin High School did receive, I have to put this in for me, um, <laughs> imagine that, did receive first place in the Gold Seal Chapter of Merit, which is like a sweepstakes award for um, like the number one chapter for doing different things in the state. So I just kind of have to plug that for a second. So I was very proud of my children. For that because they did projects, they competed in things, and my parents also helped as well. Um, we also received Who's Who second in the state, as well as the Richard D. Clanton Award. We received third place in that, and those are monetary awards for that. Casey Kiefer, who's at the softball game, she received those awards, and I was very, very proud of her because um, state officers and, and other people apply for those things, and, I, and I'm going to tell you something, Casey is, is well-deserved of those things, and it was a state officer that beat her. So, <laughs> I, 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 you know, I, I just um, wanted to kind of plug that in for her as well. Um, as Ms. Um, Bartlett alluded to before, we had several um, in our, as she did with Atlanta in, from Calvin, the top ten place winners, but only the first, second, and third place winners get to go to the national level in um, FBLA. So we did have many students that um, received the acclamations for being able to go on stage in those top ten awards. 
but um, I did want to tell you who I have going to nationals and and right now I have two of my students here and if they'll just stand right where they are we have Ivana Wilson and Jessie Kelly her name's Michaela Kelly I, I'll say Michaela every now and then because with FBLA you have to enter their first names so um, and Michaela is going to be going excuse me Jesse is going to be going in FBLA principles and procedures to the national level and that's very very it, it's just a um, facts um, test and it's a very very stringent policies and rules that you have to follow in that test and Ivana will be going in social media it's a new category um, Twitter Facebook <laughs> and um, it's a very popular category and Ivana um, we'll be going to represent that and she will be presenting that. Ivana also went computer problem solving as well as sales presentation to the um, state level so she is ready for that. I also have my local chapter in your business report which won first in the state. Alexis and Ivana and Casey Keeper worked on that. Partnership with business which we worked with David's Pro Burger this year. We won first in the state. Um, Stoney McLarty and Ashlyn Duck will be um, representing business financial plan, Kayla Duke and Robert Taylor, electronic career portfolio, um, I'm sorry, business financial plan, one third, electronic portfolio, first, excuse me, third place, that was a tie score for the first, second, and third place winners. My American Enterprise Project, um, Simona Curry, Michaela Kelly, and um, Victoria Carpenter, and then the social media, of course, Ivana and Alexis McLarty will also be going for that. Um, so all in all, I have 10 children that are going to be able to go That's to that. Awesome. And um, of course, I have my parental support as well. And um, it, it does fall sometimes, and we, we encourage everyone to participate, but it does fall sometimes where some children that do receive first, second, or third place are not able to attend because of previous obligations that they've had but they are still recognized and um, they still their parents are still excited and the children are still excited. We appreciate all that the board has ever done for us. The trip is in Chicago, Illinois this um, this summer so we're um, going to be flying out of there and um, once again I'm, I'm, I'm thankful for everything y'all do and um, I'm thankful and thankful and thankful for <laughs> you do. I'm thankful to the Lord above for everything. And thank you for giving God the opportunity. And thank y'all for dealing with me. But anyway, okay, I'll sit down now. <laughs> Oh, and some of my other children, I'm sorry. You know, Mr. Bartlett, i got to take the stage again. Some of those, <laughs> my other children were at the softball game as well. So I'm sorry. I'm there are a lot of things happening going on right now in, in, in our school system. That's why some of these uh, students are leaving. And, and they, they asked me, Mr. Bartlett, would we have to stay the whole meeting? And, and you don't. You didn't. Uh, they didn't. So uh, that's okay. But recognition is, is, is what we're here for. And saying thank you to your those who are uh, accomplishing all these great things. Calvin High School. Uh, I want to say with 10 people going to FBLA to yes. Chicago mm -hmm. this summer, outstanding. So Patricia mm -hmm. McDowell, who is the uh, FBLA advisor there, has done an outstanding job. Last year she was the state advisor for the whole, recognized as top in the state of Louisiana, number one in the state. So we're proud of you, Patricia, we're very proud of you and all the things that you do at Calvin. Uh, all right. Dotson High School. Mr. Hearn is here. Principal of Dobson High School, Mr. Hearn. I was going to uh, congratulate all the boys from Atlanta, but they left. Uh, we were four of those 33, so, and I thought we were pretty good, so I, I'm proud of them and want to congratulate them as well. Uh, we've had a great year at Dobson. Uh, a, lot, a lot of students have done a lot of different things. Uh, I've got 13 that qualified for the state literary rally, and I'm, I'm just ecstatic about that. I had four, uh, some girls who in the early part of March with their sponsor, Ms. Hood, she's with me tonight, and I'm going to let her sit down. She had surgery last week, and I'm just kind of surprised she's here with us tonight. But these girls went to Baton Rouge, competed in uh, illustrated talking, and uh, placed well enough to uh, attend the national convention, and uh, we're excited about that. If I'm not mistaken, that's in Washington, D.C. These girls are Emily Bowles. Come on, girls. 
Emily Bowles, Randy Marler, and uh, Ariel Ott. They uh, qualified and illustrated talking. They uh, made a script concerning bullying and presented that at the uh, state convention and placed well enough to attend national convention. So I'm awful proud of them for what they accomplished. Thank you, Joe. FBLA, uh, likewise carried, I think it was 22. Mr. Tags, where are you at? Come on, Mr. Tags. I'm going to let you come up because you're not uh, ailing. Mr. Tags <laughs> took, I think, 22 to uh, FBLA competition. She had two or three more that got sick weekend before and wasn't able to attend. We did real well down there. I can't tell you exactly how many we've got in the top 10. Mr. Tags may be able to tell us that, but. We had nine that placed in the top ten, and, and they did an outstanding job. But we had two that uh, placed well enough to go national, and I'm really excited about these two. First one, she's not here with us tonight. She's playing softball. I left her about a quarter to five, and they uh, were winning a softball game. So I, I was excited about that also. Now, all of you who know me, if it's got to do with athletics, I get I get pretty high. <laughs> but. Uh, Taylor Burnett plays first in public speaking and will attend the uh, convention in Chicago likewise. And uh, she's, uh, she's a little special. She's a junior and she, uh, she placed last year down there, did real well. Went back this year and uh, placed first in public speaking too. So we're proud of that. Next one, Landon, come on. Landon Krill. Landon had a partner. Uh, they worked on a, a project had to do with uh, business <coughs> presentation. Thank you, Land. Business presentation. Carson got sick the weekend before with mononucleosis. And Landon said, that's all right, I'll do it myself. So Landon went down and placed third in business presentation. And uh, he likewise is going to get to go to Chicago uh, to compete in the Nationals. Landon is a freshman, so we're, uh, we're looking wow. for big things, and we're really excited about that. And the fact that he said, that's okay, I'll do it by myself, that just uh, illustrates what type of young man he is, and I'm really proud of him for doing so. Thank you, Landon. Thank you. Jack, first year uh, FBL, <coughs> likewise, and she did an outstanding, has done an outstanding job for us. So we're, we're just really tickled with what she's doing. And, and she thinks she's going to really do well next year. she got an idea of what to expect. Next group of people I'm really excited about. You just have to understand, I've, I've been in this business 42 years. I coached ball for 30 years, and athletics is dear to me. We likewise, not quite as well as Atlanta, had an outstanding year in basketball. We went 24, 25, and uh, 13. 12 of those 13 qualified for the state playoffs uh, of those losses. Four of them was to Atlanta. Uh, nine of the 12 qualified quarterfinals or further. So we, we're really ecstatic with our basketball program. Those guys really worked hard, really did an outstanding job. And as a result, I had two who, to make the all-state all Class B basketball team. Tanner Lee plays second team, All-State Class B, and uh, Jay Thompson was on, on the honorable mention. Also, our coach, who was a second-year head coach, was the only other name mentioned for Coach of the Year Class B. So I guess you could say he was runner-up Coach of the Year, but uh, we're extremely uh, proud of what Neil has done and accomplished in our basketball program with these guys. Uh, likewise, I had two who are Class B, All-State, All-Academic team members. Tanner Lee made a 3.8369, and Travis Williams was a 3.8182. Tanner's playing baseball tonight. Travis just couldn't be here, but Tanner's playing baseball as well. You know, they just play ball. Uh, <laughs> This weekend, Sunday, I got up and read the paper from Monroe, and we had two guys who made the all uh, Northeast Louisiana small schools team. 
and that's uh, that's a pretty good accomplishment too. So I was really pleased with those. Jay Thompson was second team, and Tanner Lee was honorable mention. So we've had an outstanding year. Baseball and softball still going on. Those kids are still going to the state literary rally, and we're really excited and, and uh, with what what we've done and what we will do in the future. Thank you. Mr. Hearn, one more time. Recognize your teachers who are here, the first year teachers, and then tell me if they are. Ms. Staggs is the first year sponsor of FBLA. Ms. Hood is here. She's the second year sponsor of uh, FCCLA. <clears throat> okay. And, and that right there in itself, Mr. Hearn, you, I know you're, you're tremendously pleased because when we get productivity like we have already, we mentioned already this evening, a first year teacher is either sponsoring or doing something. Uh, Ms. Hood. The Stags, thank you for the efforts you put forward, and those the students from from um, at, uh, Dawson High School who uh, who placed all academic all state recognized as such. We're in the business of re uh, of academics, uh, and and that's outstanding. That's really outstanding. Then I didn't know anything about the uh, small school in North Blue. Well, that whatever. just came out Sunday, so that's, I didn't know know it till Sunday morning. That's an honor, also. Yes. So tremendous thing from Dawson High School and. Mr. Hearn, uh, uh, congratulations to you and your successes, and uh, to Coach Stanford, outstanding job there again with him. That's great. Dotson High School. We'll go to Winfield. We'll go to Winfield Middle School. So we have the principal Winfield Middle School here, uh, <coughs> Brent Carpenter. So Mr. Carpenter, I'm gonna let you recognize your Thank you. outstanding students. Thank you, Mr. Bartlett. It's always a, a privilege to get to recognize students. Come up, Daniel. Right off the bat, I'd like to introduce Daniel Simmons to everybody. <coughs> Daniel is a uh, outstanding young man from Winfield Middle School. I wrote down a few things. Uh, he's an honor student. Uh, very seldom. How many B's have you made? Not many, huh? One, one B. Uh, I didn't even tell that. Yeah. It was a high B, though. Good as a high B. <laughs> also, uh, Daniel, he's a member of the beta team where he qualified for state in that. Um, He's a member of our football team, just not long ago left spring football practice, so he cleans up well too, uh, <laughs> proud of that. But uh, today I'd like to recognize Daniel. Back in February, I think we had a little snow during this time, Mr. Simmons. They hauled, uh, I think it was four Winfield Middle School students to Baton Rouge, where they competed in the regional finals level of the uh, National History Bee competition had 120 plus kids uh, from around the region and Daniel placed 11th in that competition which is outstanding. He uh, qualified I think the weekend or the next weekend after school's out so he doesn't get to miss any school just so you know. <laughs> they get to go to Lexington, Kentucky for the national competition and I know he will uh, represent our middle school and win Paris well. So good luck, congratulations. <laughs> We're very proud of, of Daniel Simmons, and I, I, I must say this, uh, Mr. Carpenter, he is also, we have to recognize his father because his father is a leader in this parish in education, and that is uh, Al Simmons. Al, raise your hand, so he's there. <laughs> Daniel, we're proud of you, and so is your father. But sitting right behind you is your grandparents, I understand. Is that correct, Daniel? And I'm proud that they're here, uh, Mr. and Ms. Simmons. Thank you for supporting Daniel and the Wind Parish School System and all that you have always done and are you're doing now. Thank you very much. Winfield Senior High School. Do we have a teacher representative from Winfield Senior High School uh, here? We don't, but I guess I'll be the impromptu. You're the man. <laughs> I, yeah. I'd love for you to do that. <laughs> and I'd like you to identify yourself and, uh, and your other fellow students and go from there. Uh, I'm Zach Little. This is Keaton Hadaway, William Walker, Bo Vines, and Alex Van Blericum. Uh, all, all of us are going to nationals at the moment. Uh, one of our, uh, me, Keaton, uh, William, and Bo, and Christian, who couldn't be here, we got first in the state in uh, parliamentary procedure. And, uh, and FBLA or FFA? Uh, FBLA. 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 This is uh, after we scored first place in the district and received an $1,100 cash prize, which was divided amongst the five of us. Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> to add to that FBLA stat, uh, 
this year's state hall was much bigger than the last year, taking 35. And uh, some of our accomplishments were the fourth largest chapter in the state. Wow. We uh, third place in foundation con contributions in that, uh, supporting the uh, the state representation for national office if they're running or anything like that. Our banking and financial system got seventh place in the state. Our business financial plan got eighth place in the state. Our business plan uh, got second place, and that yeah. was a team event. Yes. One. And your members were Shelby Green, Sarah Elliott, and. And that qualified them for national competition. Our help desk uh, test taker got 10th place. And our social media campaign, uh, right behind Calvin and Miss McDowell, <laughs> uh, received, received second place. And that was the team myself and uh, my counterpart, Jordan Phillips, was on. So all of y'all are going to nationals? Yes. yes. We have a grand total of nine students going to nationals, three, uh, three of which are two time competitors at the national level. Right. Would would one of y'all identify your uh, your uh, advisors? Lindsey Griffin and Miss Nikki Triplett. Uh, we have two National History Day representatives that will be traveling to state sometime. I hear after Friday. receiving Friday. first places at regional. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'd like to give credit to my grandpa. Uh, he trained our team. Mostly. Who is your grandpa? Uh, Steve Vines. Oh, my <laughs> <God. Yeah. laughs> uh, And of course, uh, congratulations to all our state literary writer qualifiers. Please don't ask me to tell who they are. <laughs> um, <laughs> We'd like to thank the school board, uh, school board for supporting us and uh, giving us a, a little money to help us out for nationals. And uh, thank you for everything y'all do. And uh, we have a lot of parental, uh, parental support behind us too. So thank y'all. Right. Thank y'all. <laughs> Ms. Van Barrickham, have you been involved in any competitive events in Winter Parish down at this level before? FBLA. FBLA. No, in, in, in any other area. Um, I mainly just do like FBLA and stuff. I've gone, I've been, I've advanced to the state literary competition, literary rally competition every year. And I've been to the state competition in national history twice. And then I went to nationals in FBLA in 10th grade. And then this year I placed in top 10 in all of my events at FBLA. Adding to Alex's list of achievements, you are all looking at the WSHS FBLA member of the week. Wonderful. Yay! Outstanding. Do we have any other school that has students here that, for recognition? It really, it, it really makes me feel uh, uh, pleased to know that uh, the students that you've heard to name mention, and, and especially at Winfield Senior High School, uh, Senior High School here, uh, these young uh, men and young lady show their leadership ability and their skills by expressing themselves very well and uh, and uh, you can tell that they have had some leadership training and speaking and, 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 and what have you so we're so pleased and proud of all of you and uh, uh, Wynn Parish has so much to be thankful for relative to the students and their ability to compete and ability to bring recognition to themselves and it is noted that it's not just athletics we're proud of our athletes but it's also the areas of co-curricular activities like the FBLA and FBLA, uh, FFA and, and the uh, National Hist the History Beat, which uh, is uh, outstanding. So we're so proud of all of you. I want to say to all the parents and the grandparents and others, uh, kinfolk who are here to support your, your children, your students, your young men and women, thank you for that. We could not do any of this without the support of the parents and the uh, community. Patricia. Ms. Brown, I do want to tell that this Winfield P. Law team did very, very well. I cannot tell you everything. I have. Jason will be in the meetings, and he'll have the little bit of know, but I'm going to tell you something. This team did very awesome. You have to take a test, and then you have to present. And you have to make it to the top ten. Um, after that, and I'm, I'm going to tell you something, this team, not that mine didn't do well with <laughs> Mr. Um, Mr. Mercer's, but this team, I'm going to tell you something. They did very well. And guys, I, I want you to study really hard because I'm going to tell you something. 
you got something, you know, y'all's team's got something. I'm going to tell you that it really well. Really That's well. great. Good deal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mr. Bartlett, we've also got here, we've got from freshman to senior on this team, so we do have freshmen on here, freshmen all the way up to senior on this group. So, yeah, two freshmen, two sophomore, and a senior. Okay, maybe I shouldn't have said Very young group. Thank you, Thank you, I want to now say something, board. Y'all see the excitement these people have about their accomplishment, what they're doing? We need to have that on this board talk about it too. <laughs> excitement about their accomplishments. All of you who are, who are students who, who are anyone else who come for uh, the recognition, y'all can stay for this whole board meeting if you'd like. Or you can leave whenever. Thank you so much. Nobody wants to stay with Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. greatest reward that educators have is to see in the faces of those young people like that the excitement that's generated with their accomplishments and things that they do. Mm -hmm. if, you want, if you want to have the support of mamas and daddies and grandpas and grandmas and all those other kind of things, you just you, you recognize and you brag on the students a little bit. And we, you, can, you can have anything and have the support of the whole world if you take care of your business like that. I think we need to do more of this and I know it's, it's taking a little time but I, I, I'm not backing up from that. These are kids. That's what we're all here for. Mm -hmm. These young people that we saw here tonight. So I appreciate your, uh, your listening and the recognition that you've given them for what they've done. Can I, I'll say something on, on that on that end as well. And, and I, don't, Mr. Barnett, I don't. But do they still refer to these programs as vocational programs like they used to? What, what does the stadium recognize? Like FBLA and FFA and FCLA. <coughs> I think they're appropriately vocational programs, but they're student support organizations. Right. You know, but my point is, and you know, nobody loves sports anymore than I do. And I love, I, I watch all kinds of sports. I, I watch hockey. I don't know what they're doing, but I like to watch. <laughs> but the chances of, of, of one of these great basketball players making a career out of that's, I mean, I think you would all agree, that's pretty slim. But the chances of them taking something that they learned from one of these vocational programs, FBLA, FFA, FCC, LA, whatever that might be, that I use more, more. It's a life skill. I use more things that I learned in those programs in high, in high school than anything. Else. Not, not that we, we have the best education system in the state. Don't get me wrong, and, and our educators are great. But those things that I learned in those programs are the things that I use every single day of my life and every single day of my business. You can't you can't buy that, it's and, and we're losing support every day from a state perspective for those, for those programs. And but it's truly a life skill. But I think we should also recognize the girls that are going to Girl State. I don't know if we have Absolutely. boys going to Boy State, but it's a great that's program. awesome. It's a great. That's program. another. That's another. I went there, skill. and it was. I'm yeah. telling you, I learned so much in that week. It was crammed down your throat, but you learned it. I mean, it was the most fast-paced thing I've ever been around. We ever lose the support. Whatever support we get for those programs, we've lost something valuable right. for our first year. Like, like Mr. Burton, it always says, I mean, it, it's an example tonight with all the the kids that we have that we had present tonight that we do have the cream of the crop in one parish. Right. That's right. Okay. I tell you, when when, when Wind Parish shows up at one of these vocational they know we're competitions. There. The rest of them, they hang their head because they know they're, going to, they're probably competing for seconds. That's I mean, right. It's the way right. it is. I move we approve the minutes of March 2nd. Second. Okay. Uh, I have a motion by Ms. Long to accept the approval of minutes and a second by Mr. Foster. Do I have any public comment? 
Any board member comment? All in favor? Aye. Uh -huh. All opposed? Motion carries. Academics and Instruction Committee report. <coughs> The Academics and Instruction Committee met in the school board office on Monday, March 23rd, 2015, with Ms. Long, Mr. Martin, and Ms. Gartman are present, absent Ms. Klingen and Ms. Moore. Mr. Bartlett presented the committee with a proposed student calendar for 2015-2016. The committee authorized the superintendent to proceed in presenting the calendar to the principals and their staff for consideration. As there was no further business, the committee adjourned. So, anybody want to accept this? I'll sign so move. I'll sign so move. I have a motion by Ms. Carpenter and a second by Mr. Martin. Mr. Martin uh, to accept uh, the Academics and Instruction Committee report. Any public comment? Any board member comment? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Wind Parish School Calendar 2015 2016. What was the response we have uh, I presented the calendars I, I, I mentioned y'all uh, last week and to the principals and um, they uh, took the calendar home for, for their schools and shared it with the faculties and uh, the, I, I don't have any negatives other than there were some concerns uh, relative to starting a little later and uh, uh, at least by one school affecting uh, some athletic activities and also uh, uh, there was concerns about not having a winter break uh, by that school and uh, but that all of the any real issues all the other all of the other all the all schools except for one overwhelmingly said plus 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 positive positive and uh, the one that was uh, <coughs> Had the comments that was affected uh, negatively as was not uh, over. It was not overriding the positive. So, uh, some some many of the faculties overwhelmingly say it's great, and there's a big plus was starting a little bit later in August. So, uh, so and having just, some fall, some breaks during the fall. Well, then I move we accept this calendar. I second. I have a motion by Miss Long and a second by. Mr. Martin to accept the Wind Parish School Calendar for 2015-2016. Do I have any public comment? Any board member comment? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Finance and Budget Committee. The only feedback I had on it was you know, my wife. I mean, right here. She, she me. <laughs> well, nobody's calling me about it, so. And if, if it, nobody's here to protest it, then. It must not have been too bad. I think if huh? somebody would have had a real big problem with it, we'd have heard that. Thank you. <coughs> Finance and Budget Committee met on Monday, March 23rd, 15. Mr. Brown, Mr. Martin, Ms. Long present. Absent, Ms. Clayman, Ms. Moore. Ms. Veronica Prey appeared before the committee to ask for their consideration in increasing student breakfast prices from 75 cents to 85 cents, student lunch prices from 125 to 135, adult meal prices from 250 to 275. This recommendation will be presented to the board for their approval. There is no further business for the chair. Yes, sir. I have a motion by Ms. Carpenter and a second by Ms. McCoy to accept the Finance and Budget Committee. Do I have any public comment? Any Madam, Pre Madam President, uh, this was presented by uh, Ray <coughs> and uh, presented for your consideration. Sometimes during now and, and in the school, we need to make a decision one way or the other, if we're going to support or, or not support that recommendation, or modify it, or ever how we want to use, do it, uh, it would it would it would be a suggestion for me that you, uh, if you feel like you could tonight make a decision along those lines, I'd like to see you do that. If you want to wait another month, that'd be fine also. But as soon as we we have schools that are putting together agendas, they're 
rules and their policies and things for next year that will be printed sometimes early summer, sometimes this goes to the printer <coughs> from the schools in the middle of May. So, that, you know, if we can approve this soon, it, it would be good. And uh, this is for next year? Yes. If you have any questions mm -hmm. to ask along these lines, Mr. Frey is ready to answer any questions. Was this the most we could go up? Or yes, sir. Um, the maximum, yes, sir, is 10 cents. For the student prices. I'm sorry, but we, did we discuss maybe going up more on the adult? On the adult, yes, ma'am, we did. And there's no policy that states you can't do that as and far as... You and you wanted 10 cents? Well, we, we decided originally I had 250 to 260, but we the board decided to go to 275, to go to 275 for the adult. That would be employees, teachers who eat in the cafeteria. But student prices, there is a cap of the 10 okay. cents in a year's time. So the only difference from the, the cap would be that adult? Yes, ma'am. So how much do you think that as far as the food prices and stuff for next year, I know because this, you know, you're jumping ahead having to do this. Mm -hmm. But it, it's probably going to be a necessity, isn't it? Yes, ma'am. And I mean, we haven't had an increase since um, 2008, and that was done from 40 to 75 cents for breakfast, and lunches were increased from a dollar to a dollar 25, and adult lunches were two dollars to 250. So it's been since 2008 that we've and had. We're just an hoping increase. and praying that this ri um, rise will I'm cover sure. the cost. It may not. I don't know if you got this copy last time, but here's a uh, summary of uh, uh, Browning parishes. And we would be um, comparable to what some of the parishes are charging right, you know, right now. And less than some, too. No, we're, we're less than most yes, of them yeah. anyway. I think one of the th issues we spoke about was you don't want to raise it so much that you uh, hurt participation. Yeah, but, so, I mean, you can't go up at 10 cents 10 anyway. 10 cents so is all we can yeah. raise it. Right. So. I'm talking about only a dollar. Yeah. Yes. I think a quarter is not going to hurt participation, yeah. do you think? Not with the teachers, no. <laughs> But with the new guidelines in place, especially with all the whole grain products, I mean, mm -hmm. obviously the prices are, are going up. Uh, you know, <coughs> it's, it's a necessity, especially looking at what the general fund, and we discussed what my balance is. At this point, it's $468 and probably lower as I speak. So the, it is necessary to have these prices increase. If it's not, then it comes out, the balance comes out of the general mm -hmm. fund. So. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, yeah. there hasn't been an increase in 2008. <coughs> right. It's time to keep up, Overdue. isn't it? Yeah. Well, you have before the floor right now from Farmer and Procedures Direct a motion to accept the uh, the committee report, and then you can have a motion after that to raise prices, whatever y'all decide. So we just need to vote on that motion, right? Yeah, I had a motion by Ms. Carpenter and a second by Ms. McCoy to accept the Finance and Budget Committee report. So we, we need to make a motion to We just need to vote. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Do I have any public comment? Any board member comment? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Now just because we accepted that committee report doesn't mean now we, we need to, to that price on the bill. We need to have a motion to accept the revised suggestions by Ms. Parade, is that right? Move by the committee. At last committee meeting, we did revise it from the right. 250 right. to 275. Right. That was For noted. Adults. That was right. the only revision, right? And otherwise, everything else. You it would be the 10 cent ask. increase okay. at breakfast, 10 cent increase at lunch. I believe we uh, accept the recommendation of the committee on the price. Okay, I have a motion uh, by Mr. Foster to accept the um, increase in the student um, lunch prices and, a and, the adult and the adult and the adult, adult prices. A and a second by Ms. Carpenter. Do I have any public comment? Any board member comment? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All against? Motion carries. Thank you. Yes. Personnel information. In your packet, tonight's packet, this is for informational purposes for you. Uh, we have uh, the following people who have uh, indicated retirement uh, plans, and the date of their retirement is listed to the right of the uh, of their uh, school. Uh, Margaret Miller, Vernon Carpenter, Becky Brazil, Kate Gilmore, Julie Zimmerman, and Barbara McAllister. 
at this point in time, Mr. Simmons, am I correct in saying that we have letters from these individuals indicating this? We do. All those are have been received and, and looked at by you, which makes them official. And there's no action needed. Okay. Superintendent comments. Do, do we have a date up for the uh, retirement thing yet? Yes. May the 4th. May 4th. What day is that? You know? That's Monday. Monday. So it's right before the regular? Yes. And I, I, since we that question has been asked, we generally we, we have the place for the retirement team, which is Winfield Middle School. For many years prior to this one, we have had, since that is a board meeting tonight, we have our meeting okay. there. Is that okay with this board mm -hmm. this time? So we will make a public announcement that we'll have a meeting at there in the uh, library at Winfield Middle School. Mm -hmm. And what time is the the retirement thing? It was at 4, four, four o'clock. Right. And our board meeting starts at 5.30. Okay. Anything else? I will via email, I'll send all of you after tomorrow. I have a meeting with the principals tomorrow to finalize the rest of the year, all of the activities, the days for the activities that y'all involved in. I'll send that to you uh, after tomorrow and principals and supervisors meet tomorrow. We'll make sure that all the dates are sent to you. But I know that that one is correct. I know we have the honors banquet scheduled after that banquet week, date. week after that on May the 11th. And of course, all the graduations start a couple weeks or a week after that. So I'll send those dates out to you. <coughs> the only Excuse other me. thing that I'd like to say to all of you was two other things. Number one, all of you are aware that we completed our first uh, phase of park testing. And uh, I want to tell you that I have never been involved in a testing situation that was as arduous as this, but as smoothly handled by our employees as this one was and uh, of course Ms. Trammell is our testing coordinator she has done a, an outstanding job of, of uh, organizing of course all of my staff here uh, we've uh, they've worked diligently and it's all been very good the principals the schools where all the testing have taken place there have been very few if any glitches at all even small ones have been few so it's been good we will have another series of tests for LEAP and I LEAP. Uh, my days are five. That's next week, isn't it? Next Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of next week, uh, where social studies and science will be tested. That's LEAP and I LEAP tests. And then we'll have the first week in May, we'll have the second barrage of park testing. So uh, we're not through testing by a long shot yet. But I feel real comfortable that our students are doing as well as they can do. Uh, our teachers this year, uh, they instructed as well as anybody in the state of Louisiana, and our kids were as prepared as they could be. So I feel good about the, 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 the impl implementation of the assessments, and also I feel good about the performance of our students. And the interesting thing about it, we'll only know the results of the uh, social studies and science test before the year's out. We'll not know the results of the other tests, ELA and and math until next fall, October, November. So, <clears throat> so they're they're well, they're going to be good. So I think it's I think we we we've done well. Third thing, the last thing I want to share with you is uh, next Friday will be pre-K roundup in Wind Parish. Uh, I'm going to pass these around, and it's, you'll have you can get you a couple or three and. This is the announcement. This is a flyer that students in Wind Parish have taken home. These have been posted as placards throughout this community. Um, we had a large ad in the Wind Parish Enterprise. I think maybe a half page ad advertised this in the Wind Parish Enterprise. We have uh, had this on the local cable vision. We have had this uh, announced in a number of different ways. We, we hopefully the from the, the churches will announce it. We want to get the message out to all students who are three years of age. It's different <coughs> registration than we've ever had before mm -hmm. per Act 3. All students will come to Winfield to the uh, Civic Center, the old fairgrounds forestry building, and will register there. 
all students must register there, one location. And uh, the information requirements for, for, for registration you see listed here, and uh, the registration times are listed per uh, alphabet, the last name, uh, alphabet, uh, and uh, information relative to contacting of schools for other for additional information is listed, school numbers and so forth and so on. And also Pine Belt Head Start is numbers listed on the, the right hand side. Mm -hmm. For the first time we'll register all students mm -hmm. and all students, Head Start and the public schools students will be registered and students will be divided as to where they're to be. If a student if a student wants to go wherever it wants she wants or he wants to go or the parent wants the student to go, then that's the student that can do that. With two with two caveats. Number one, a student gets first choice if they live in a district where a school is. And number two, students must be uh, the students who are socioeconomically disadvantaged will have first choice. So uh, it's a little different format than we've ever had before. Is that going to be harder on those little ones because you're all these kids are going to be there and it's kind of harder to, you know, I know the pre-K roundups that I've been, the teacher always takes them and, you know, kind of test them and all see the where they're All the pre-K teachers and, and, other st and lots of other staff will be there to assist and um, help that facilitate that. Well, and and I have a concern. And with just the, the, you don't come, everybody would come at one time. It's alphabetically done on the, you right. see that down there? Yeah, I know, but still, you're looking at, you know, you may be looking at 20, 30 kids there at one time. You know, and they always do, you know, kind of test them when they're there just to see where they're at when they do the pre-K. Well, you have 20 or 30 kids Well, I know, but you're talking about kids who've never been in a school, you know. There will be screening, but there will be more, a lot of personnel there to help this out. And, and yeah. Leah, we, we've got a concern, but we think that everything we've covered our bases. We'll just have to see. I mean, now, you've got some a, little ones that are just shy. If a student misses this registration time, if, they, if a parent just happens <laughs> not to find out about this, then uh, they need to contact the school where they want their child to go and the principal will give further instructions or can be referred to us down here. The only thing that bothers me about this, and it's nothing I don't think that you can do about it, is if you go to re this preschool registration and you think your child's going to, say, Calvin, but, and then before you know it, that uh, 20 has been met, and then somebody comes along a week later, and your child's one of those 20, but it's when that other child comes in, that registers a week late and they're economically deprived and yours is not, then they're going to take yours out. Yep. So that's terrible to think you got a slot and then all of a sudden you don't. Well, Act 3 was passed for uh, I know. Dis disadvantaged. I understand that, but I mean, to think you've got one, then all of a sudden it, we should say this is just temporary placement. We don't know if you'll really be there or not. <laughs> Give them a little. Heads up that it may, it's, this is temporary. It's not, does, not written in stone at this point. When does registration close? It opens up on the 17th. It closes. Uh, it don't close. It doesn't. It never goes. So That's what I'm saying. Up until the first day of class. You may not have a place. Exactly. <clears throat> it's tough. We, I, that happened it happened last, last year. year. I know it. And that's, if they have enough, they might be able to get another whole class. But then you'd have to bring your child say from Calvin to Winfield because they had more in Winfield than they did in Calvin. Or well, bring it from, or because from they had an empty place. You're right, they have an empty place in, in Winfield and they don't have one in Calvin. So it, it's just a tough situation all the way around. And I don't know how you would, unless you say well, this you is have, a tentative well, schedule. Well, it's you not fair. Disadvantaged in one class. You can't. Well, you can only have, it, it depends upon the funding. The funding determines the number of students you can have in a class. Mm -hmm. uh, any federal funding is it's only 20 students per class. So if you have 25, agent. what happens to the other five? They have an option of going to a class to in the Atlanta that is not full, or to a class where it is funded by a general fund. Like we have we one did. general fund funded. We did that last year. Yeah. Pre-K in Wind Parish, and uh, 
the year before last, we had a general funded pre-K at, at the kindergarten school. We don't have one this year. We didn't have numbers. But Dobson High School has the only general funded general fund funded pre-K. Does this the uh, is this part of the MFP? No. No, this is federal. No, it's federal. Okay. Well, I hate it. I hate it for the kids because whenever those kids do start, mom and daddy get so aggravated because theirs didn't get in that when that kid does have to mandate to go to a kindergarten, it, they're lost. further behind lost. than the other kids. I mean, that's what now makes me, it bad. Let me share with y'all. Up to this point, we have met the needs of all three year, four year olds in Wind Parish. But in other parishes, that's not happening. But we have in Wind Parish thus far. And we've had to do some finagling around and make sure that people were able to go and what have you, but we've met the needs of, of, our, of our kids. And we don't anticipate that to be any different this year. Also, I need to say this. This is no different than what we've done in the past, except we're registering every one student place. in one place mm -hmm. on that day. Yeah. So that's the only difference. But you know, we did have some parents that were upset last year because they thought their child had a slot and then at the last minute they didn't. So is there any way we can say this is a tentative roster? We don't know for sure until we the day school until school starts that your child has a place here or how yeah. do we, we they that? send a letter out We communicate that to our okay. parents. Okay. Yeah. Right. They send their letter out like a week or yeah. week before school actually starts or whatever. Yeah. But you still don't never know. I That's right, until the week before school starts. And there's no way you can fix that. And I said, I don't know any way you could. Well, that it. ain't on us either. That's right. Okay. Other than that, everything seems to be going quite well. I, I want to remind all of you also that at the end of school is only a few weeks away. Right. It's unbelievable how fast this year has gone by. And we have teachers that are being evaluated as we speak every day, I think. That's all, that process is going on now too, so. Well, they're, they're being observed. Observed, right. Y'all need, y'all some more, y'all have these. I just want to add something. In that pre-K in Head Start, in the Pine Belt, is over there by the gym, right? That is. Or is are they all just going to be in one school? There is, that, that is where the Pine, the, uh, the Pine Belt Head Start Center is. Mm -hmm. So that's where those students that we're talking about that will be in the the pre-K next year oh, four-year-old head start will be in that school oh. and then they have younger children also there three-year-olds mm -hmm. they have they used to work there and they have younger they started two years old I believe yeah at this point in time we do not have any uh, younger than four-year-olds in our record school mm -hmm. but head start does yes that's mm -hmm. what in Wind Parish Head Start and, and our regular school system have really uh, mm -hmm. worked hand in hand mm -hmm. and Head Start has been involved with a lot of the curriculum and, mm -hmm. and assumed the curriculum that we use in kindergarten. Mm -hmm. So uh, we've had a good relationship and mm -hmm. expect that to continue. There's no problem there. That's right. Any <coughs> board member comments? I'm <coughs> Leslie John. Mm -hmm. If you don't have any boys, I'm going to